Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The independent inquiry into historical child abuse in England and Wales has been beset by problems since it began in 2014. Today the inquiry named its fourth chair in just two years. Professor Alexis Jay, a child protection expert, will now take over after Dame Lowell Goddard became the latest to resign. Professor Jay led the inquiry into child exploitation in Rotherham. Our Home Affairs correspondent Daniel Sanford reports. Professor Alexis Jay is not a judge or even a lawyer, but she is a hugely experienced social worker and former director of social services. At least 1,400 individual children in Rotherham were victims of sexual exploitation over the 16 years. She also led the successful and groundbreaking inquiry into the rape and trafficking of children in Rotherham, which reported in 2014. The first chair of this England and Wales wide inquiry was Baroness Butler Sloss, but she stood down when an old recording emerged of her suggesting that a bishop who'd abused children should not be named. Then came Dame Fiona Wolfe, but she stepped aside because of her friendship with the former Home Secretary Leon Britton. The third chair, Dame Lowell Goddard, came all the way from New Zealand, but resigned last week, speaking of the inquiry's legacy of failure. The inquiry has had a few false starts, but this is really good news, the appointment of Alexis J. Uh, the work needs to continue apace, and I'm sure that it will. By asking an existing member of the inquiry panel to be the new chair, the Home Secretary has minimised the disruption in the huge task that lies ahead. But there's no escaping the fact that there are risks in appointing someone with no formal legal training to run such a complex inquiry. Nonetheless, this senior lawyer who represents survivors of abuse in North Wales thinks she is a good choice. Alexis Jay has got the background and she's already working with this inquiry. So she's going to be bringing something to the inquiry that maybe a lawyer could not bring. What lies ahead for Professor Jay is at least five years of gruelling testimony. She'll hear the first formal evidence from survivors of child sexual abuse in February. Daniel Sanford, BBC News at the Home Office. Now, it's a job you'd be forgiven for turning down, especially as three previous incumbents all had to resign. But the Home Secretary has managed to find a new chair to lead the troubled independent child abuse inquiry. Professor Alexis Jay previously exposed the terrible scale of abuse against young girls in Rotherham. She's now tasked with getting the investigation into establishment abuse, which has been plagued with problems, back on track. But already, her appointment is being criticised because she lacks a legal background. Since it was set up two years ago, the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse has had something of a leadership problem. First, Baroness Butler Sloss was forced to quit, as was her replacement Fiona Wolfe, due to links with the establishment. Next, their replacement, New Zealand Judge Dame Lowell Goddard, announced that she was standing down. Now the government has turned to the woman who led the inquiry into sexual exploitation in Rotherham, Alexis Jay. Despite finding herself in charge of an inquiry the previous incumbent described as haunted by a legacy of failure, the former social worker says, I am committed to ensuring this inquiry does everything it has set out to do and does so with pace, with confidence and with clarity. Be in no doubt, the inquiry is open for business and people are busier than ever working hard to increase momentum. Those who support abuse survivors have welcomed her appointment, especially because she's already worked with the inquiry. Alexis J has a huge amount of experience she conducted a very thorough inquiry in Rotherham and she has more than 30 years experience of working in the kind of organisations that are going to come under the spotlight of the inquiry. I know that the staff and the panel members and certainly the victims and survivors that I'm in touch with seem to be very pleased that Alexis Jay is going to t uh, take this inquiry forward. In her new role, Alexis Jay will be looking into allegations of abuse at Westminster, in the Anglican and Catholic churches, and at children's homes across the country. A former panel member, himself an abuse survivor, quit because he felt the inquiry was in chaos 
and questions if it is too much for one person to lead. One of the things that um, Professor Jay has to do right at the start is clean out some of the toxic nonsense that's going on within that inquiry and allow her and those around her who, who do support her, um, predominantly the other panel members, um, uh, allow them to, to get on with the job and if the inquiry itself needs to change its structure or its uh, direction then that's what needs to happen. The appointment of Alexis J means that someone with prior knowledge of the inner workings of the inquiry will be at its helm. It is an attempt to generate or perhaps more accurately create pace in an inquiry that has been beset by delay and false starts. Emma Murphy, News at 10 at the Home Office. An honest and fearless woman, that is the verdict of the Shadow Minister for Preventing Abuse on the new fourth head of the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse, Alexis J. Professor J, a child protection expert who led the inquiry into child sexual exploitation in Rotherham, promised she would handle her work with pace, confidence and clarity. The Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, said the government's commitment to the inquiry was undiminished. So is she the right person for the job? And if so, what will be Professor Jay's biggest challenge? Here's our policy editor, Chris Cook. Three times a high-profile lawyer has been appointed to lead the official child abuse inquiry. Three times they've ended up resigning. The latest one just last week. Today, their replacement was unveiled. Not a lawyer. Professor Alexis Jay was already a member of the inquiry panel, but will now take the chair. With a background in social work, she's best known as the author of an inquiry into Rotherham's failure to deal with local abuse. There were examples of children being doused with petrol and threatened with being set alight. They were threatened with guns, made to witness brutally violent rapes and threatened they would be the next if they told anyone. That damning report led to major changes for the town. Resignations and change followed. But there are still some concerns about Professor Jay. The first two chairs of the inquiry had to stand down because, being members of the establishment, they happened to know some central government decision makers whose work it was likely they would end up scrutinising. Now, Alexis Jay's appointment has been broadly welcomed, but there are similar concerns about her background in social work and local government. She's a social worker, when one of the key aspects of this inquiry is looking at this, the abject failure of the social work profession and its amount of paedophiles who work, social workers, every week there's one arrested or it's a teacher. These are not the people you would go to to lead the inquiry. She's not a leader. There are two other major concerns. The first is that Professor Jay isn't even a lawyer and this sort of inquiry would usually be chaired by a judge. The second is that perhaps no one could manage this inquiry. It's enormous. There are 13 separate investigations that have formed part of it. Perhaps, some people suggest, we should aim for a smaller, more concise child abuse inquiry. Take Lambeth, subject of one of the 13 inquiry strands. They've received 5,000 documents from an old inquiry, a further 100,000 items will need to be sifted and there are another 26,000 archive boxes to deal with. I think Alexis Jay can be a very good chair. She will need support on the legal side. If she gets that, I think she can be very successful. In terms of the, of the remit of the inquiry and is this task too big, if you interpret the terms of reference literally, yes it is, but I think the inquiry will adopt a much narrower and more focused approach. They will look at institutions, they will look at the most serious examples of failure and they will draw from that the evidence that they need to reach conclusions. Well, Professor Jay has wide support. The survivor representative bodies don't agree on everything. Some core participants in the inquiry are angry that they weren't consulted about her appointment. This is vitally critical to our lives and healing process, but we're treated as we were children as if we have no account. And it's, it's unacceptable. And that affects our faith and our confidence in an inquiry. Professor Jay has a much harder task than she did in Rotherham. She needs to keep survivors contributing to this inquiry. But it's two years old, it's on its fourth chair, and it's still years from drawing any conclusions. Chris Cook, well here in the studio are Gabrielle Shaw from the National Association for People Abused in Childhood 
and the barrister Anthony Heaton Armstrong, who is an expert on evidence in sexual cases and his personal experience of child sexual abuse. But first, let's talk to Esther Baker, who's made allegations of being abused as a child and has previously been critical of the inquiry. She's in our Liverpool studio. Good evening to all of you. But first of all, Esther Baker, what do you make of this appointment? Hello there. Um, I, th I think this is a good appointment. Uh, I think it's the first time that the inquiry's managed to, to get a good chair. What is and, it about uh, her? What is it about her that gives you faith? I've got faith in that uh, Alexis J has proven herself in the past with the Rotherham inquiry. I think she's, she's got a good concept of listening to survivors, which none of the former chairs have had an experience in. And tell me, what do you make of the fact that she doesn't have a legal background? Essentially, she isn't a lawyer. She's not a lawyer, but I, I think that in this case is a good thing. Um, she has a good legal team around her. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that not being a lawyer will, will make her more approachable for survivors. And, and you, heard, you heard, of course, uh, in the film there that uh, Chris Cook made, that there are also concerns about social workers being involved. You know, the social workers haven't got the cleanest of hands always. No, I, th I think he's, he's right in one respect that um, obviously social workers haven't got the, the best reputation at the moment within the inquiry. However, I think that we're, we're never going to find somebody that's completely, you know, not associated with, with abuse mm. or any of the strands in mm. any way. It's, it's physically not, not possible. Can I just before we finish uh, talk about the time frame because in the uh, terms of reference uh, of the inquiry there is an interim report promised by 2018, which is two and a half years, and yet it looks as if Alexis Jamie have to work for 10 years. And what do you think about the timescale for this inquiry? I think that the timescale worries a lot of people, but I think if we're going to do the right job and get justice and correct recommendations for survivors in the future, then, you know, it's going to take time. It's not something that can be rushed, and a rushed job won't please anybody. Well, Esther Baker, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, now, coming round, talking to you first of all, Anthony, um, a barrister with decades of experience and your own experience, do you think this is a good appointment? I don't know the new chairman very well. I've read a little bit about her, but I doubt that she is the right person for this massive job. Why? I don't believe that she has the experience that is needed for somebody to manage such a huge operation. And I agree with those that consider that a lawyer with the right sort of experience would be the correct appointment. Except there are very, very few people who have dealt with an inquiry of this scale in the United Kingdom and abroad, as we know. So maybe that is not the, the key criterion. No, I don't suggest that the person that ought to have been appointed needs similar experience, in other words, managing such a massive operation, mm. but they need to have experience of operating a public inquiry. Well, what, what do you think about that, Gabrielle? Do you have the same concerns? No, not particularly, and I think I'd like to pick up on something that um, we heard from Mr Baker, um, a survivor herself, um, it's about the confidence. Mm -hmm. um, and let's, let's remember what this is about, the adult survivors uh, of sexual abuse as children. To, for them to come forward, to give the evidence which, they, which the inquiry wants them to do in the truth projects and the hearings, etc., they need to have confidence in the chair, someone who understands what's happened. And Alexis J has proven herself through Rotherham. Well, I mean, you talk about uh, the truth project, which mm. is one of these 13 strands. Yes. Um, and as I said, in the, I mean, it's there in front of me, the terms of reference, there will be an interim report in less than three years at the end of 2018. Now, if this is about being thorough, mm. and, and as Chris Cook says, that even the documents from Lambeth themselves, how can you possibly have an interim report of any merit in less than three years? No, that's a great point. And, one th and the confidence, public confidence in the inquiry has been knocked um, by the resignations of the ch three ch previous chairs. Um, and communication needs to improve. There must be more regular outputs. And that's something I think a lot of people, a lot of survivors would urge. Um, regular outputs, regular reports as they happen. We can't well, wait... Well, they do talk to, about progress reports, to be fair. Absolutely. We can't, but we can't wait for two and a half, even five years, for a magical report that will suddenly solve everything. Mm. We need to rebuild that confidence. 
Anthony, what do you think about the terms of the inquiry? Is it too broad? Do things need to be honed down? I think it's much too broad and I think the ambitions set for it are totally unrealistic. I think what has to be thought about is what the inquiry can achieve for the future mm -hmm. and for the future protection of potential victims of sexual abuse, not what has happened in the past. And the inquiry needs to look at procedures that have already been set in place by a number of the institutions whose activities or uh, inactivities uh, uh, are under the spotlight. And given, and given that it's going to maybe be another 10 years before we get a final report, then you're suggesting that really going back historically through every institution's track record is not even going to be counterproductive, it's going to end, ending up going to be frustrating for people. I think the focus should be on the progress that has been made by the institutions whose activities or inactivities are is, under is the spotlight. Is that the most realistic? Is that the more realistic thing or does it mean I that things will get brushed under the carpet? Mm, I slightly disagree with that one because um, surely the best way for, um, if you fail to learn the lessons of the past, you're doomed to repeat them in the future. And if we, and the scale of the inquiry, as Anthony mentioned, totally agree, it's, it's massive, but then so is the scale of the problem. Children have been abused and failed by the state on an industrial scale in the past. It's not pleasant. No one wants to think of a society, they live in a society where this happens mm. to children and they have failed time and time again, but they have been, and on a huge scale. So the inquiry must be commensurate um, to, to actually encompass that. And economies of scale, it makes more sense uh, for one inquiry, massive as it is, to, uh, to oversee these different 13 different strands of work because the lessons, the failings that have happened, are likely to be similar. There are likely to be themes that come through that. So what, uh, if you break it down to 13 different inquiries, it's, it's, not, re it's not, not economical, it's not wise, have under one, uh, one roof, uh, one, one inquiry. That is, would suggest that you could actually report on the 13 one by one. It doesn't have to be come out in a big bang. What Gabrielle seems to be saying is that there is a massive problem historically. Mm -hmm. um, if everyone is agreed that there is, the focus should be on the cure and making sure that procedures are put in place, if they haven't already been, that will prevent right. the same thing happening again. What is the point of investigating things that everyone mm. seems to accept have happened in the past. Before I finish, I just want to say, you know, we are on our fourth head in two years. You know, when uh, Judge Goddard was brought over from uh, New Zealand, that was going to be it. It was this was the best person to conduct and complete this inquiry, and look what's happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we sure, indeed, that uh, um, Alexis G will actually work on this for another decade? I, th I think so. I mean, as she has the she has the past, she has the history to to prove that she can um, take on an inquiry of this nature, um, and I think she has the will as well. We've heard some uh, in the past reporting that it's a poisoned chalice, and I don't think it is. I think this is a great opportunity for for, for right to come to survivors who've suffered in the past. But if in, in any chance this one doesn't work, they presumably can't just keep on being new chairs. This has to be it. I when it has to be it. You mean this has to be the last attempt. This has to be the last attempt to get somebody to yeah, do it. I think the inquiry within the scope that has been set for it is totally unmanageable and I think it's going to hit the rocks again, frankly. I, I can't see anything coming out of it with its present scope being particularly useful for the protection of future potential victims. You're more optimistic. Yeah, I am very optimistic. Thank you both we very have much to be. indeed. <laughs>